Assalamualaikum and good day dear student So let's discuss together Inverse interpolation methods So we will look at two important methods The first one is inverse Newton's interpolation method And the second one is inverse Lagrange interpolation method Okay, let's start with the introduction first. So, what is actually inverse interpolation methods? So, basically, it's a reverse way of standard interpolation methods. So, student, if I can recall back what we learned in interpolation method. Previously, in interpolation methods, let's say you have several data. Okay, remember, for example, in this table, you have 1, 2, 3, 4 data. Okay, so normal interpolation methods means that we are interested in finding the value of fx. Okay, we are interested in finding the value of fx for a particular x data points. Okay, what is mean? It means that if you remember when we learn interpolation methods okay standard interpolation methods let's say you have this data point and then you want to estimate what is your f let's say x is in between somewhere here let's say we want to calculate here what is if x is 6.5 okay so we want to approximate it. what is the value of our fx here all right so this kind of method we call as interpolation okay means that you estimate fx for a given x data point okay for a given x okay we want to find fx for certain x value all right the other way around all right the other way around now we are interested for inverse okay now we are interested for inverse interpolation okay inverse interpolation so it means that the reverse process okay so reverse way so the reverse way what we did is actually you know fs okay you want to find sorry you know your fs then you might to then you might to find the value of x means that the other way around means that we have the value of fx okay so now we want to estimate what is the x value for a certain given fx value okay so this is means by inverse interpolation methods that we will discuss later okay so as i told you in inverse interpolation methods we have two important methods means that the first one inverse newton interpolation and then inverse lagrange interpolation so let me start with the first one inverse newton's interpolation method Okay, so let's start with inverse Newton interpolation methods. So before I go to the formula on inverse Newton, so let me recall back what we learned in normal interpolation, Newton interpolation. Alright, so student, previously in Newton interpolation, as I told you, you want to estimate your fx okay so by using newton's interpolation so we approximated by polynomial of degree n okay so remember if you have n plus one data point 
so you want to construct polynomial near degree n it means that if you have four data points so you want to construct third order polynomial if you have five data points so you want to construct fourth order polynomial okay so n plus one data point we want to construct n order polynomial okay so this is the formula given by newton's interpolation okay so remember is equal to fx naught plus x minus x naught where x here is actually the value that you want to insert later on to estimate your fx and then multiply with f x1 x naught so this is the divided difference formula okay where the value here the constant value here obtained from the divided difference table and then plus x minus x naught times x minus x1 times with second value from the second divided difference okay and then plus dot 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 until okay so generally is x minus x naught x minus x1 all right dot 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 until x minus x n minus 1 okay depends on your n order of your polynomial and then this is the value from the last column of your divided difference table okay so remember how we obtain all this value here you need to construct divided difference table okay you need to construct a divided difference table misspelling okay so remember how you construct divided difference table so in the first column here is column for your x and then here is column for your fx how you get all this all value this all value come from the known data point okay from the given table and then you construct the first divided difference second divided difference okay so how you obtain all the value here is come from the recursive formula okay so for example here how i obtain the value here is come from fs1 minus fs0 divide with s1 minus s0 and so on until you complete all the divided difference table as i told you until you reach only single value at the last column here then you stop your divided difference table okay so this is the standard newton's interpolation but now we want to look at inverse newton interpolation okay so i must to recall first so that you can see what is the difference okay so it's like a basic uh, inverse function if you remember when you learn inverse function in inverse function okay you have your fx then you want to estimate your x the other way around okay similar to inverse newton interpolation also so what we did in inverse newton interpolation so you want to estimate what is your x okay how we obtain the estimation is based on constructing your polynomial degree n and then by plug in the given f value okay means that you know your fx you want to estimate your x okay so how about the formulation okay since this is newton so it's a reverse way around if previously here is fx naught so now here is x naught and then plus so in bracket here is f minus f naught and then multiply with first divided difference so the first divided difference we construct based on our f value okay f1 f naught and then plus f minus f naught times with f minus f1 multiply with our second divided difference okay f2 f1 f naught okay or generally is a f minus f naught f minus f1 okay and then we multiply until f minus fn minus 1 and then multiply with our divided difference here okay okay so now look at how we construct our divided difference table in order to obtain
obtain this constant value okay so this is how we construct our divided difference table Okay, so this time, our first column should be our FSI. Okay, we switch the position. Alright, we switch the position. Previously, our first column is S. So now we switch the position. Our first column should be our FSI. And then here is our SI. Okay, so let's say we have F0, F1, F2, F3 and then here S0, S1, S2, S3. Again, this is also the value from your data. Okay, non data point. And then we start construct our first divided difference uh, value. Okay, so how we obtain the first value is similar way. Okay, from the recursive formula, but now we have the first. Um, denominator in sorry numerator here become s1 minus s0 and then we divide with f1 minus f0 okay and then calculate a second value here so second value here come from s2 minus s1 over f2 minus f1 and then the last one here the last recursive value here is come from x3 minus x2 over f3 minus f2 all right and then you complete your uh, second divided difference okay so similar way by using these two value here and then you will obtain the value here and then by using these two value here then you calculate here okay then finally the last column um your third divided difference okay so as i told you until you reach only with a single value then you stop your divided difference so this is how we construct um, the formulation okay polynomial for inverse newton interpolation we switch okay previously here is x so now become f because f is a known you want to estimate x okay so this is how we construct the divided different table we switch the position the first column is your fx and then here is your x okay so let's look at example Okay, so let's look at this example. This is from your module. In a chemical reaction, the concentration level of a product at time t was measured every half an hour. Okay, means that t here is in half. It's about time. The results of the experiment are tabulated in the table below. So this table is uh, described about the concentration level for every t hour. So what is the time taken when the concentration level of the product reach 0 0.60? Perform your estimation by using inverse Newton interpolation methods. Okay, guys. So this time, okay, we know that uh, T and then this is concentration level for every T. So means that the function is CT. Okay, uh, the concentration based on T. All right, but now. You are given the concentration level. Okay, you are given the concentration level. This is the value. Then you want to estimate what is your time. Okay. So, it means that you want to estimate T equal to what hour. Okay. When your concentration, okay, CT is equal to 0 0.60. Okay, so now we want to use inverse Newton interpolation methods. Okay, for, so first look at how many data you have. Okay, since the problem did not, uh, do not mention uh, order of your polynomial, means that you must to interpolate all the given data points. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, we have 4 data points. 
okay so given for data point okay so means that we need to estimate by using third order polynomial okay we must to construct third order polynomial third order polynomial or polynomial degree 3 okay remember because n plus 1 data points you must to construct n order polynomial okay so it means that we want to estimate t okay so t is approximated by constructing your inverse newton polynomial degree 3 for the given c okay so later on we will plug in c with 0 0.60 so how we obtain this okay so t naught plus c minus c naught and then we need to have the value from divided different table later on okay and then plus c minus c naught c minus c1 and then t second divided difference then plus c minus c naught c minus c1 c minus c2 and then the value from third divided difference okay so this is our general uh, polynomial for this problem all right so based on the data here okay so this is our ti means that here is your t naught t1 t2 t3 and then here is our concentration. Let's say I use CI. So here is your C0, C1, C2, C3. Okay, so let's construct divided difference table. Okay, so let's construct our divided difference table. So as I told you, this column should be your CI. Okay. Okay. And then the next one here should be your ti okay so we substitute all the value here so we have 0 0 0.23 and then 0 0.50 and then 0 0.67 okay so for ti we have t not 0 t1 0 0.5 t2 1.5 t3 is then let's start calculating our first divided difference okay so how we obtain the first value here all right so i show you the first one only so here is a 0 0.5 minus 0 divide with 0 0.23 minus 0 so if you set your calculator in four decimal place you should get 2.17 three nine all right and then for the second one here if you calculate by using your calculator you should get three point seven zero three seven and then the last one here if you calculate by using this two value here so you should obtain two point nine four one two all right again then continue your second divided difference okay calculate a second divided difference by using these two value so if you calculate this means that 3.7037 minus 2.1739 and then divide with 0 0.5 minus 0 okay so here you should get the value is 3.0596 and then for the second value here by using these two value you should get negative 1.7330 again okay, then the last one complete your third divided difference 
okay so by using these two value if you calculate you should get negative 7.1531 okay so negative 7.1531 so this is how we construct our divided okay so now to complete the solution all right so from here So we want to estimate our t, okay, approximated by using our third inverse Newton interpolation. When given your c concentration is zero point six, so then you replace here zero point six zero, okay. So we substitute all the result into this formula here, okay, into this general third order polynomial so t naught so what is your t naught so refer here t naught is zero all right and then plus c minus c naught so c is 0 0.60 minus z naught c naught is zero all right multiply with your first divided difference value okay so this is our first divided difference because we choose this as our starting value so it must follow like this okay this and then we take this as our first divided difference value so it's a 2.1739 and then plus c 0 0.6 minus c naught time we see minus c1 0 0.23 and then time with the value from second divided difference so we choose this value all right because it's come from the same arrow here so 3.0596 all right and then plus 0 0.6 minus c naught c minus c1 0 0.23 and then multiply with 0 0.6 minus c2 0 0.5 and then find multiply with our last value here okay so time with negative 7.1531 so if you calculate this here we find out that the estimated t it's given by 1.8248 because t is in hour so we put h here so this is our estimated value means that from the table here when c is 0 0.6 okay so we want to estimate here c is somewhere here okay c equal to 0 0.6 the time is somewhere here okay so as i told you sometimes we can see the pattern of the uh, the pattern of data okay since from this uh, data we can see that as the concentration increase the time also increase so if 0 0.6 is somewhere here so the time should be in between 1.5 and 2 so we reach the value is 1.8 okay so it's a in between it's a reasonable result all right so this is our estimation time for the given concentration 0 0.6 okay so this is how we calculate inverse newton interpolation method